Shalom, everybody. Shalom, everybody. God is good, isn't he? We serve an awesome God. I am so glad to see you all here. Everybody looks so beautiful. Uh, everybody, you know, was coming in. I was just looking at how beautiful everyone is. Some people say, well, I didn't have a hat. I don't have my gloves. I said, that doesn't matter. You're here. And that's, what, that's the only thing that matters. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Um, I was asked to give um, a speech or a talk on the times uh, that we're going through now and the pandemic and everything of that nature. Um, and before I get started, I'm gonna lift up some fire to the Lord. We're gonna, I'm gonna pray and ask God to, to honor what it is he would have me to say today. Father God, in the name of Yeshua, we bless and we thank you. We honor you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. I pray, Lord God, that the windows of heaven be open and that you will fill me with what it is you would have me to say today, Father. Father, I step aside and I, I usher you before me and before the people. And I pray, Lord God, whatever I say and do, it will be done in your name, in the name of Yeshua. Amen, 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 amen. So the title of what I want to talk about is, um, I'm watching my time, is the effects of these times on the soul of a godly woman. The effects of these times on the soul of a godly woman. Let me unpack that for you. Soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. It also means the way we think, the way we choose, and the way that we feel. So I could actually say this, the effects of these times on the soul, I'm sorry, on the mind, will, and emotions of a godly woman. Now we all know that we have been affected, everyone here has been affected in some way by the pandemic. But not only the pandemic, but the riots and the fighting. You know, every time I think about the image of George Floyd with his, with a man's knee on his neck, it brings something, it does something to my soul. It does something to my mind and my will and my emotions. And that affects everyone. So how does a godly woman handle these times? We all believe that in the Lord and we all love the Lord, so we are all, we can consider ourselves godly women, all right? So how does a godly woman handle these times? Well, first of all, you have to know who you are. And let me just back up and say something too. I want to say that I really believe that when we as women, godly women, come together, something special happens. Something happens in the spirit. I really believe that. Two things. Heaven rejoices and the devil trembles. Heaven rejoices and the devil trembles because when women come together, things happen. We have the power to give birth to some things. We have the power to bring something to, to fruition. You know, and I'm going to be bold enough to say somebody's going to be delivered today. God told me last night, somebody's going to be delivered in this room. And he said it's going to be a subtle deliverance. What it means is that, thank you, Lord. What it means is that you may not realize it right now, but you're being delivered. Because whenever there's a shift in your mind in the way that you think, that's a deliverance. You may not even recognize it until you get home. You may not even recognize it until next week when you hear something that God is already going to allow me to say. You're going to say, oh, all right. That's your deliverance. It's not always the jumping and the round and the screaming and the shouting and the rolling on the floor and the crying and the screaming. Maybe that's, that's okay for some people. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm speaking from the way God has delivered me. It was a subtle deliverance. So I'm going to believe that somebody is going to have a subtle deliverance. There's going to be a shift in your way that you think, because the enemy is mad. That's why there's so much going on, you know. So 
Let's give God some praise right now. God, we thank you that you're going to deliver us. You're going to bring forth your word, Lord God, and people are going to be delivered. People are going to receive something in the name of Yeshua. We bless your name, God, and we call forth your word, Lord God. We come against anything that the enemy has set up to destroy any of these women here. They're in the house of worship and praise, and they're going to receive what it is you will have for them to receive today in the name of Yeshua. Now, like I said, every one of us has been affected by loss. Our jobs have been affected through this, this pandemic and the riot and everything. The ministries that many of us are part of have suffered. Possessions. And the, the, the biggest loss of all is the loss of a loved one. I don't think there's anyone in here who has not been affected in some way Maybe not directly, but indirectly. You've been affected by this, this pandemic and, and the times that we are in and the loved ones that we have lost. That, that, is, that, that is the most heartbreaking thing of all. And I have experienced that. And so it's, it's, it's been a hard thing. So maybe you felt forsaken. You maybe felt desolate, desolate or destitute or depressed because prayers have gone unanswered. But I want to encourage you to let you know that's not who you are. You are Hephzibah. <laughs> okay? Everyone here is Hephzibah. And I want to get that scripture up there, Reg, if I can. Um, Isaiah 62, 4. You are Hephzibah. In Hebrew, Hephzibah means my delight is in her. That's what it means. That's the Hebrew word. We, so we say Hephzibah, but we don't sometimes explain. It means my delight is in her. That's what it means. So if we can get that, or if I can have my Bible, I can just read it. I think I had it marked. Thank you, travel sister. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um... Yeah, but Hephzibah means, the very meaning of it is, my delight is in her. 62.4, you shall no longer be termed forsaken. You shall no longer be termed forsaken. You might have felt that way because of the things you're going through. And your land, Beulah, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. Now, if we break that down, what, what God is saying, now this is a, metaphorically, Isaiah is speaking about the land of Jerusalem. But how much more would God say about his people of the land? You know, if he talks this much about the land, that the land, he was delighted with the people of the land, how much more would he be delighted in us when we decide that we are going to be a part of his kingdom? Amen? So it says that, Hepsibah and your land should be called Beulah, which means married or have dominion. So what God is saying is, you or I delight in you, and whatever you have is going to be protected. Because it's married to me. And I'm, I'm the protector. So when we buy into that, that belief in knowing who we are, things open up. Things begin to happen. God begins to make things shift in our, in our understanding. And that's your deliverance. Amen. And another word, I was studying last night, and this other word came to me that I um, remember when I was in school. And it's another Hebrew word. It's called segula. I don't know if you all remember that. Segula, it means special treasure in Hebrew. You can find it in Exodus 19.4. <laughs> Exodus 19.4, I think I have that marked as well. Segula means special treasure. So we are a special treasure. We as people of God are a special treasure. Okay, Exodus 19, 4 through 6. It says, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore... If you indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be a special treasure. 
that's Segula in Hebrew. To me, you, you will be a special treasure to me above all people for all the earth. God is saying, we as his women, we are a delight to him and we are a special treasure. So the frustrations, the things you've been going through in life, the things that's been happening since this, trend, this pandemic and all of that, if we grab hold to what God is saying, we, it doesn't mean we're not going to have these issues, but we're going to have a way out. Okay, we're going to have a way out. Now, I remember um, last year sometime during the pandemic and in the middle of it, I remember um, talking with a co-worker of mine. And I said, you know, even after this pandemic is over and all this rioting and all of this stuff is over, you know, because it's going to come to an end. It doesn't come to stay. It comes to move, okay? <laughs> so when it comes to an end, I told I said, you know, that's going to be trauma. People are going to still be traumatized by the losses, the things they've gone through, the difficulties, the loss of jobs and family and friends and just so much, and your children are going through a whole lot. I said, that's going to be trauma. And trauma is the residual effect of the pandemic or anything that's going on in our lives. And I looked up the, the definition of trauma and it says it's an injury caused by an outside, outside, usually violent force, an event or experience. That describes everything we've been dealing with. It's an outside event. It's something that has come up on us, but it comes to go. And I believe from that trauma, the residual effect of trauma is depression. There have been so many people suffering, even our children. The uh, depression and suicidal rate has increased during this time. And even our kids, the, they are committing suicide more than they normally have been. You know that's from the enemy. But God wants us to know today that we have the power to make that that shift because we are women and we are empowered to empower other people. We are pregnant with purpose. God made us a certain way so we can do a certain thing. A man can't bring forth a child. They can plant the seed, but they can't bring it forth. And that's what God has increased, for us, has done for us. And I remember, you know, the women, we were praying about some things and I said, we're going to have to pray until we see something change. Do you believe that we saw something change? Not only in the atmosphere, but in the natural. We prayed and we, we stayed before God because we gave birth to something. We gave birth to something. And I know that God, if God has done it for me, or in, he'll do it for anybody. Because that's how we are, created, we are created to bring forth. Now, depression is, like I was saying, is a residual effect of trauma. And this is the definition of depression. It's a state of feeling sad, low spirit, melancholy, specifically loneliness, accompanied by inactivity or guilt, and that's a killer right there. People get so guilty about things. You know, some people are guilty because they're still here and their loved ones are gone. Loss of concentration, social withdrawal and suicide tendencies. And I want to encourage any and everyone here, if you are dealing with any of these things for any of a long-term uh, time, I would encourage you to seek help. Please, there are counselors that, that are able to help you. There are uh, therapists, there are friends, there are your family. Please seek help if you feel like this is where you are because this is not where God wants us to be. You know, I'm, I'm truly, and I'm not bragging, but I am truly, truly blessed. I have four sisters that we don't always get along, but they keep me in check, and I thank God for it. I have my EWC family and my, my, my sisters here, and I, t I said, look, I don't mind. I don't care if I got several degrees. If I'm wrong, you're going to tell me. I'm, I don't want to tell me I'm wrong whether she wants to or not, and that's Bernita. <laughs> she don't mind telling me, and I don't care. I thank God for those 
that he has placed in my path to keep me straight, you know. And I thank God most of all for my tribal sisters. I got two of them right here. <laughs> My tribal sisters, we, stay, we hang with, and, and I thank God because within that group of us, we have counselors, um, coaches, evangelists, ministers, prophets. Yeah, we got all of it within the group of the tribe, and I thank God for that because God has truly blessed us. And I would encourage you to, Get with people that you know that are heading in the right direction, that they can keep you on the straight and narrow. We need it. I don't mind people putting me in check. I really don't. I really don't. I prefer it. So please get, get help and get connected with people that can help you because, again, we got work to do. We are Hepzibah Segula. We are, the, we are God's delight, and, our special, and we are a special treasure. So we got work to do. We got to give birth to some things. Okay, now, um, Reggie, could you put up that exercise? Now, we were talking about depression, and so I want to share something with you. You know, I like to take a word that's a negative, has a negative connotation, and turn it into something positive. And we see the word depression there. And no, I just read what the definition of depression is and all that it, it entails. But we're going to change that and we're going to make a positive affirmation out of it, okay? It's going to be a three-word sentence directly from depression and in essence, it's going to destroy depression. Depression is not going to be there anymore. By the time we get, by the time we get finished with this word, depression is going to be gone. Can you cut the eye and paste it underneath? Now skip over because this is the second word. Cut the press, put it. Now take the the e and put it down by the s. Take the d put it down by the E. Take the, the O-N and put it, that's a third word. <laughs> now, now I, didn't, I didn't come up with this myself. I was on YouTube and somebody said something. I said, Lord, I press on. So 20 years, not, I'm not going to say 20 years, maybe five years from now or maybe next year when your son and your, and your children ask you and ask, the, uh, ask you or somebody say, well, mama, how did you, how did you handle this depression? How did, I mean, how did you handle the pandemic? How did you do this? And how you can say, I pressed on. That's what I did. I pressed. <laughs> I pressed on. Through, depression is not there anymore. Now, I'm not making light of depression. It's a real thing. It's a real, I'm not making light of it, but I'm just showing you that there's a way out. And it's pressing on. And I'm going to show you in scripture. I always, I don't like to say stuff and do things if I can't line it up with the word. Philippians 3, 13 through 14. This is Paul. And you don't have to put it up. I'm going to read it. I'm reading it from the NIV. And this is Paul. And now he's not talking about depression, okay? I just want to uh, explain what I'm going to try to do is eisegete this scripture. For those uh, scholars that know what it means, it means kind of take a scripture, not out so much out of context, but kind of, Stretch it a little. I saw you doing this. Yeah, you stretch it a little, but you're making your point. And the point I want to make is that we need to press on. Paul said in Philippians 3, 13 through 14, he said, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. I mean, I don't understand this. And I don't understand. A lot of us don't understand. I haven't taken hold of why all of this has happened. It doesn't make sense to me. So he said, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting 
what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Now, I know some of you saying, Dr. Maxine, how can I forget losing my loved one during this time and losing my job and, and not having, you know, the need, the, my needs being met like I used to? How can I forget that? Well, Hebrew understanding of forgetting is not forgetting, forgetting. It's really this turning away from or, or reconceptualizing what it is. You can't forget the, the the fact that you lost somebody special in your life, but you can remember the good times. You can't, you can't forget the fact that your ministry that you've been working on for 30 years kind of just went to no, nothing after this pandemic because of so much. You can't forget that, but you can praise God that he's got another ministry coming for you. So that's what it means. It doesn't, in the Hebrew, I, I'm, I think I may have taken it out of context too much, but I think the Hebrew word for that is shakak forgetting and it means to turn away from to turn away from. don't 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 let it take over because you got something to do you got to you got to press on okay so forgetting what is behind straight into what is ahead I press on now this is in the scripture I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus and when I was looking at that the other night, when I saw I pressed on, something came to me, you know, I'm from the South, way down South, Louisiana. And I think this is a song called, I, I Believe I Run On and See What They, okay. Well, down in the South, you know, we kind of put, connect the, um, the syllables together. And I remember when I was a little girl, I used to hear people say, I believe I run on and see what the end gonna be. Not believe, I believe, I, I run on. I believe, I, how many of y'all want to run on with me and see what the end going to be? We got to press on. We got work to do. We got things to do. God is going to show himself true to those who are his women. His Hepzibah, Sigula, his delight, and his special treasure. Amen. So I, I, I believe I believe I run on and see what the end going to be. Yes, amen, amen. <laughs> so, another thing that I want to leave you with, because I'm trying to leave tips for, for us so we know how to run on. One other thing I want to leave is um, the power of prayer. I couldn't not, you can't do anything with to me without the power of of the Almighty God intervening into whatever situation you're in. So it's the power of prayer. And again, I remember, it's been a while, but I remember, and I may not have heard it correctly, but a well-known teacher say that if you pray more than one time about anything, that's tantamount to the fact that you don't have faith. Has anybody heard that? Let me see your hands. Okay, now I know who I'm talking to. <laughs> I've heard them say that, and I said, no, I, ain't, I didn't, did I hear that correctly? And that's, that's probably true for him at that level. And there's some things I can pray for one time, and I know God has heard me, and I know it's done. But there are sometimes there are things that have layers that you have to pray and pray yourself through. So I, I ask God, I say, Lord, I know this man, he's a man of God, but I don't know about that. And then God began to show me, well, you know, some people are, that's his level. That's where he is. And this man has raised people from the dead. So he's at that level. I'm not there. How many of you are not there? Okay. All right. Well, this is what the Lord told me last year. I was seeking his face about this. And this is what he told me. And I hope this um, helps somebody. He says, ask and keep asking. But don't ask as if you think I didn't hear you, because I heard you, thus says the Lord. He said, you ask until your soul hears you. Now, your soul is what your mind, your will, and your emotion. What he's saying is, you ask me until your mind, your will, and your emotion lines up with my word, so you can have the faith and the strength to what? Press on. God is good. Yeah, we need to give a, let's have a praise break right now. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you. And then again, the scripture comes. I tell you, God never gives us anything without backing it up. Think about Paul. How many times did Paul pray for that thorn to be released in his side? <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. How, he said he sought the Lord three times. That probably was for his mind to get right, his will to get right, <laughs> and his emotions to get right, to line up with God. Now, I, I, I'm not saying that's what it happened, but that, you know, that could be it. That's probably why it took him three times. He had to get his mind right. He had to get his will right. And he had to get his emotions in line with God. And then what did he hear? My grace. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. <laughs> God is good. God is good. He is good. So in conclusion... So what does a godly woman, how does a godly woman handle these times? They first of all know who they are in God. They know that they are Hephzibah, God's delight, and Segula, his special treasure. Then they can pray until their soul hears from Yah so they can gain the faith that they need to press on to see what the end going to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some, some praise. Like I was saying, somebody's been delivered. Somebody's been set free. It's going to be a subtle thing. You may remember something that was said, and God is going to quicken your, your understanding. To me, that's deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless you and I thank you for this time. I honor you and I praise you. <laughs> I magnify your name. You are God above all gods. And I thank you for, for using me as the vessel. And I thank you for deliverance in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. <laughs>